So here is the, the marker, the Sharpie marker on the high point of the nose. And then I just scraped it once with a metal ruler. Of course, you can't see that very well because I now have my tape in place. But that scrape represents the, the, uh, the center line on the front, the line that we had drawn in the middle, and then just eyeballing, uh, this is a bad representation with the tape, but just eyeballing the center of the trailing edge. Uh, so all I did then would, at this point was put the, the uh, masking tape on the, the center of the trailing edge and um, I had my wife come out and hold that, hold that in place. And then just using a long piece of tape, I'd lay that tape down to my mark here and then from that mark I would hold it with one finger and then lay the tape down in line with this mark here. So this edge of the tape here represents my center line from trailing edge to the nose. Now, just so I don't get screwed up, I will come back and I'll use a Sharpie marker and I will actually draw the center line against the edge of the tape just because I don't want to get confused and start referencing this edge. And if for some reason the tape were to move, I would actually have the line drawn as a backup. So I'm going to do that next. And then we can come back measuring from the center line. We can do our two and an eighth of an inch and then the three and three quarter inches to mark the whole locations. So I'll do that here in a second. Stand by. Now I have the black Sharpie marker drawn along the actual center line edge of the tape. Again, don't mark the wrong edge of the tape. Make sure you mark the correct side. So that is now your zero point. So from that zero point measure over, I did two and an eighth. You can come up with your own number if you wish. Two and an eighth over, make a mark. And then from there, three and three quarters of an inch, three and three quarters of an inch, etc. You can see that this used to be my seven inch mark. I went ahead and crossed it out. I don't want to confuse myself and end up drilling this as a whole, and it shouldn't be. So if you have any stray marks, make sure you either um, use some alcohol and erase them or just scratch them out so you know not to use it. And then of course you do the same thing on the other side. Again, this is, this is the center line, not this edge here. So from the center line, again, I did two and an eighth, three and three quarter, three and three quarter, etc. And then any stray marks, remove them or cross them out. So there's my seven inch mark there. I should probably cross that out so I don't inadvertently put a hole in there. The other thing to remember is or the other thing to consider is this piece the aft piece has the flange right that this piece rests on that flange is roughly an inch wide so i just came back from the parting line a half inch and that will put this hole roughly center of the flange that's underneath here so a half inch over from the parting line make your tick marks of course that is where i will center punch and then i'll go ahead and drill these are going to be number six screws and the drill bit for number six screw, this fell off, is a number 28. So you want to final drill these with a number, a number 28 drill bit. And you can use the copper um, Clecos fit really nice in a number 28 hole. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, center punch these and I'll go ahead and drill them. At that point, these two halves are now basically clocked and positioned to one another. So your tape holding them together can come off. But at this point, I am not going to remove my center line tape. I'll split it so I can get the halves apart, but I'm not going to take it off. That's exactly what I've done with this piece. I still have the tape in place. 
I cut it across the parting line just so I can get the halves taken apart, um, but I'm going to leave this in place for as long as I can. So, drill a couple holes, get some Clecos in there, and uh, we'll take the next step. Talk to you guys later. One more quick tip before drilling your holes. Make absolutely sure that you have your marks on the nose part, the forward section of the wheel pants. Don't make your marks on one side, and then when you flip the thing over, you make your marks on this side. This is the back half. Do not drill the back half. The holes have to be on the, on the nose piece. So make sure you get them correct on this side. When you flip it around, make sure you get them correct on this side. All right, time to drill. Talk to you guys here shortly. Okay, so now that the holes are drilled, I just uh, disassembled the halves just to show you. Of course, I drilled on my marks, and like I had said from the parting line, I came back a half an inch, so there's plenty of um, edge distance here on the front piece. And you can see here on the flange, the hole is just about centered perfectly on the flange. Again, plenty of edge distance. And you can see that on, on all of the holes. The edge distance is really great. The hole is centered on the flange. So next up, I think what I'll do, so this is how I like to work. I know that going forward, this has to be fitted to the airplane. I would feel more comfortable having this, having these halves assembled to each other um, with f actual flight hardware. In other words, I don't want to use Clecos. I could very easily use Clecos. Um, maybe I should use Clecos, but I think I would feel better go ahead going ahead and putting the uh, nut plates on here and countersinking this and using screws. That might be a pain in the butt if these got to come apart multiple times. Um, I still have the option to use Clecos at that point, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put the nut plates on all of these. So I think I'll do that next. And again, if you made it this far, you've dealt with uh, nut plates and riveting nut plates and countersinking and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to get into how to do the actual nut plate install, but I think that will be the next step for me. And then after that, I'm not really sure what happens. So I'll do that next. I'll talk to you guys later.